What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. We are once again up in the shop working on the JK King of the Hammers rig. Cassie's up here. We have quite a few projects to knock out in this video. First project is going to be the ATI Super Damper. So this is going to replace our stock LS3 harmonic balancer that came on our crate engine. Now there's a few reasons for that, the reasons we're changing it out. First being that the LS's are not notorious for it, but it's a possibility to have our factory harmonic balancer come apart and separate. Super common on Corvettes, so upgrading to a better aftermarket dampener is going to help damper, not dampener. I know somebody's gonna correct that yeah, right off the dampener, spot. Yeah. And secondly, we have to figure out our accessory spacing. So how far off the engine is our water pump, our harmonic balancer, our alternator, power steering pump, all of that good stuff. And when we're looking for a power steering pump, for example, you have to order one that's going to fit on a bracket for the correct spacing. So the LSs have three different spacing. There is the Corvette, the Camaro slash truck, and the F-Body fitment. Corvette's gonna be the tightest fitment. F-Body's a little further out and the truck and Camaro are even further out. So naturally, I don't want this sticking way out there and messing with our up travel. The Corvette, the tightest fitting, doesn't have too many good accessory bracket options. The F-Body is perfectly right there in the middle. So we ordered an F-Body ATI Super Damper as well as a bunch of brackets for our power steering pump alternator from Goatville. Now, as you can tell, I've already removed the factory LS3 harmonic balancer. Actually, my dad was here for a few days visiting. We popped that off and prepped for this video. So it's time to get the new one on. Now we have everything needed. So all we have to do is put this hub onto our damper and get this on the engine. You ready? I'm ready. I got my work hands here. So if you missed it in the last video, I separated my AC ligament or something in my shoulder. Surgery is scheduled for next week, so. Oh. I, I don't know what to say you. about that. Unfortunate situations. Luckily, I mean, I'm, I'm getting more mo mobility back. However, I think after surgery, I'll be right back to square one. So let's get this thing installed. Or should I say, let's watch Cassie get Your it installed. Your physical therapy can be working on the Jeep again. How I like that? that. We have a few little bolts right here. These are what we needed that T40 Plus bit for. So Cassie's starting them by hand. They do have a little bit of Loctite on them. See, they lined up. We okay, so there is an offset hole. We're gonna have to spin around and clock it probably. With our bolts torqued down to 16 foot-pounds, it's time to prep this thing to go on the engine. We're gonna be running a Holley uh, HP EFI system. And on the LS3s, we actually don't use this pigtail in here. We plug it directly into the cam sensor. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove this entire bracketry and that other piece of wiring harness. Figured since the harmonic balancer is off, might as well get it out of the way before we put the new one on since we're not gonna use it. Now, when you're putting on a new harmonic balancer, some people will reuse the old bolt to try to put it in, but honestly, I would suggest spending like 15 bucks on Amazon to get this installer tool. Longer threads, you don't have to worry about stripping out your crankshaft, which is something that you don't wanna do whatsoever. Now, on the ATI, we do have timing marks. The LS, we don't really need timing marks on there whatsoever. But since this is on there, we've already set the engine to top dead center. That way when we put it on, I'm just, we don't have a pointer, I don't think, but we'll just put zero degrees facing up. It's at- Did you and your dad set it at Yeah, we set it at top dead center okay. before we pulled it off. Uh, actually, before we do that, we need to throw some anti-seize on there. That way if we ever have to pull this off. Uh, didn't we, when we did this on mine, you remember we got anti-seize everywhere? Oh yeah, I remember that. So anti-seize yeah. is a little bit important on this, just in case we ever have to press this off for a reason. All over everything. It's like, the, I think I dropped it or something. And at this point, all we have to do is tighten our installer until our harmonic balancer sucks on into the crankshaft.
So next up, it's time to install our ARP bolt. And there's a ton of different opinions on how to do this. ARP does have instructions, but in my mind, the best way to do this is to install RTV or put a little bit of RTV on the back side of the washer, put our assembly lube on this side of the washer between the washer and the flanged side of the bolt and a little bit of red Loctite on the threads. Now ARP recommends their fastener lube on the threads, but personally, I don't want this to come out. So a little bit of red Loctite is gonna hold it on there. And if we need to remove it, all we have to do is heat up this bolt and it shouldn't be an issue. Oh, so, it'll be an issue. It'll be a pain. Oh, it probably will be. Yeah, it'll be a huge pain. But now I have to figure out how to get this out because I don't have my con. Oh, oh, look at that. All we had to do was start filming for it to start. Stop. Boom. So we're just going to put a little bit of this on the back side. And the red Loctite. And for anybody who is curious what size this 12 point socket is, it's a one and one sixteenths 12 point socket. Yeah, so. That wasn't in the, uh, in the instructions. Yeah, I was thinking for a second. I'm like, man, I hope I have that. Now this bolt, we torqued down to 230 foot pounds. Five. Huh? 235. 235 foot pounds. Now if you're using an LS style bolt, that's when you have to do the whole degree thing where you turn it 140 degrees after a certain torque spatic but these we just slammed down to 235. Now in our case, I don't have a torque wrench that goes that high, so we're gonna blast it on with the impact, try to seat it all the way, and then tomorrow we'll break out the torque wrench and uh, probably have to hold the flywheel as well so the engine doesn't spin over. And I didn't think about that, the Loctite's gonna stick in. Yeah, Vin has not decided if he wants to pin the crank or not. So but... on LS engines, you can actually pin the crank, and I have a pinning kit here what that does mostly for supercharged applications but we go from just a press fit damper and we actually drill two spots through the damper hub into the crankshaft and install the pins that way there's physically no way that the damper can spin outside of relation to the crankshaft so they're pinned together you know you don't really need it in in like an na naturally aspirated build or a turbo build but i mean cassie was like you know that once you set this like in a month, you're gonna wish you pinned it. Yeah. So I went ahead, pulled the bolt out, we cleaned up the Loctite off it and the RTV, and tomorrow's job is going to be pinning the crank, and then we'll go back through <laughs> and uh, <laughs> pin the crank and then put the bolt in. We were so close to being done. See you guys in the morning. Well, it's time to go ahead and pin the crank. What's the worst that's gonna happen? We. Uh, you know, mess this up and get a drill bit, bit stuck in the crank. But no, it shouldn't be too bad of a job. Luckily, we have the pin kit alignment tool. So all this does is slip inside of the harmonic balancer. And we, t we have our little jig here, send the drill bit through, and then we install one or two pins in. Since we're not supercharging it, we'll probably just do it with one. Uh, they gave us a drill bit. You have to mark the depth. And all you do for that is just... Uh, Pretty much see how far past this the pin's gonna sit, mark it on your drill bit, install all this, and drill it out. So this drill bit came with the kit. I'm not entirely sure how good of quality it is, so we're gonna take it slow, because the last thing I wanna do is break off this drill bit inside the crank. After drilling it, the only thing left to do is slide the pin in. Now this pin is stainless steel because once you start putting it in there, you really can't pull it back out. You know, the magnet's not gonna be able to pull it out. The main thing we're looking for is to make sure the hole is drilled deep enough to where the pin isn't gonna interfere with where our bolt is gonna sit on the harmonic balancer. So Mike's gonna throw it in there and we checked it with a, uh, checked the depth and it looked like it was definitely deep enough. So we should be good. Perfect. So now all we got to do to finish this up is torque it to 235 foot pounds. You ready? Yeah. Battery. God, no. The battery just died. Ugh. 
That's it. That job is done. Before we go ahead and start attaching all of the goat built brackets, we need to order the power steering pump, alternator, and our water pump. This is a, uh, a Corvette water pump, so you can actually see the difference in the spacing. So like I mentioned earlier, this is an F body spacing. This is the Corvette, so you can actually physically see it now. Truck spacing would be way out here and we'd start running into issues with the axle. So for the water pump, we'll probably swap over to a new F body water pump, but they also sell spacers that go in between the water pump and the block to space it out for the correct spacing. So we'll figure out that later. The next step is to install the links on the axle so we can start flex testing this out and making sure all of our clearances are good. Now in the rear, I've already installed the links a few days ago. It's actually a while back. Um, before the shoulder surgery, or before the shoulder issue, and we are running Clayton Square Link. So Clayton makes amazing products and they actually do offer custom length links if you're interested. So these are quarter wall, quarter inch wall, square tubing. I like square tubing opposed to round tubing. It's a little bit stronger and any type of strength is what we're gonna need. So they are all custom made for the correct lengths. We measured them out and well, we're actually gonna see if it's the right length. Um, hopefully it is. Oh, but we're in the ballpark. We're in the ballpark close enough. And with these Barnes four wheel drive, uh, Magnum Heinz, we have plenty of adjustments. So your typical Heim joint is only gonna be right about there. So you're limited to about half an inch on both end. Whereas these Barnes ones, you have plenty of adjustments. So they're still plenty strong. Now what we don't wanna do is run the joint out. You know, let's say we went this far with it. Yes, it will work, but you actually lose a little bit of strength. The closer the joints are inside the pocket, the stronger they're going to be. It's just nice to have that extra material on the Heim joint and it makes adjusting them a lot easier. Now we did go with all right hand threads. It is a little bit more difficult to make adjustments, but it's really not that bad. Opposed to just loosening the jam nuts and spinning it, all you have to do is pop one end out of the bracket, spin it that way. But the big thing is, they're not going to vibrate loose. So what happens if you have a left hand and a right hand thread on your arm is it can actually work itself loose. If the jam nuts come loose, it'll start spinning and next thing you know, you drop a control arm. So going with right hand threads on all of the links, definitely best for a race application. But even if you are building, if you're building your own Jeep, a crawler, dedicated rig, really whatever, or a street driven rig, there's nothing wrong with going with right hand threads. It just makes the adjustment a little it's just one extra step in setting your links, but in the long run, it's one less thing to worry about on the trail. So what we have to do, set the body back down, lift the frame from underneath, chop these legs because they're actually right in the way of where we need to set the front links. Get rid of the training wheels. Get rid of the training wheels. I was hoping we could leave those. I mean, you yeah, know, as a yeah. little, Super little ramp. Assault, uh, yeah, something. Assist, we could uh, put like a little, uh, like a spring-loaded flapper yes, with a hydraulic ram that comes up perfect. here, so we can, you know, lower it, right? Yes. I like that idea. No, let's get, uh, let's get this set up and get all of our links installed. So we got the Clayton links installed and we just checked full droop, not full droop because it's kind of unlimited droop without shocks, but we are at full bump. Now we're probably going to have the bump about two inches up from where it's at, but I just wanna show you guys how much room and the clearances that we're dealing with. So the upper link, as you can tell, 
is barely touching our motor mount. Our damper actually has a hair of clearance right there. Engine to the diff has clearance right in there. We have clearance on the steering box, clearance on the exhaust everywhere. So this is the absolute full bump that we can go down to. It's not necessarily gonna be our full bump in regards to suspension. But over here in the rear, everything does clear as well, but we're held up because our tires are hitting, getting into the rear quarter. So the plan is to use the RPM steering 12 inch JK aluminum stretch corners, and it's the corners, rocker guards, and front fenders. Hopefully we will be getting those in soon because I wanna see the rear at full bump. Now we have clearance up here on the gas tank. There's still probably two and a half inches up there, but we have to account for the amount that the body is coming up from the tires here. So we should clear. Worst case, if we do need more up travel, that's why we left these tacked so we can just cut these and raise the gas tank up maybe an inch to have everything clear. And that's, we have the bolts in the lower hole. If we moved them to the upper one. We definitely have to raise the gas tank, but then you get into the whole thing with, uh, you know, center of gravity versus up travel. And I think having quite a bit of up travel on a go fast rig is needed. One of the last things to check is going to be our pinion angle change at full bump and full droop. Everything looked good at full droop. And that's what I was talking about in the suspension video when we were making the mounts. It's what your pinion angle is going to do throughout that range of motion. Now on the front, it looks like our pinion angle is pretty good at full bump. It's pitching up a little bit. So we could dial in our uh, upper control arm back, but then at full droop, we're gonna have to check it. Mike has a uh, spare 1350 drive shaft. We're probably gonna bring over Carden. here. Yeah, carton, everything. It's a perfect mock-up drive shaft. We'll have to chop it, but man, this is looking good. Nice and low, everything clears. That is a very successful sign. I am happy with it. I was a little bit worried about this because you never really know if everything's gonna clear until you do it. And what a lot of people will do is build everything at full bump, and that's a good way to build things. However, sometimes it's just not feasible. When you're doing a thousand different projects at once, you can't do it at full bump. And you know, people swear by it. I, necess I don't necessarily say you have to build at full bump as long as you know what to account for and what's going to happen at full bump. So I'm happy with this. We're gonna play around with it and uh, hopefully start flexing it out soon. Everything all clear? Okay. Oh my goodness, look who just came in. This Mr. is, LG, oh my go? goodness. No! Oh, no! Okay, now, now we have, you know, we have the man in the shop. Jeremy, introduce yourself. Uh, Jeremy Duper, I guess I'm being introduced as the LJ guy now, so. Well, yeah, yeah. naturally. So Jeremy came by to help out today and hang out, and uh, Even he, if it is a JK. He managed to come after all the work's done, so, <laughs> you know, it's, no, we, hey. still, we still have work to do. This is, uh, what do you think? I love it. I've always wanted to build a race car, so being able to come at least participate a little bit, <laughs> is better than nothing so well, thanks, i love man. it all right first uh oh keep, the, keep, keep it on him first uh, yeah. oh so this is the first full-on flex well we, we've done oh, it yeah, we, so i showed up at the right time once the body's on yeah. body's attached <laughs> no no we still got plenty of flexing to do so well, I, yeah keep her going i, I never <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Good enough. No, it's two inches above where we were. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're trying to get realistic uh, set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 14 inch coilovers only allow so much. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so we're planning for uh, six inches up, eight inches down, maybe six and a half, seven and a half. I don't know, we'll find it out. But. So we are at this point trying to make some temporary bump stops just so we can set the frame back down and be able to lift the body back up. So where did those go? Here we go. So we notched out some tubing, set at uh, like six and a half inches is the distance between the uh, bottom of the frame rail and the axle tube. So we're gonna put this in place. This is gonna be the little cradle and they'll just be free floating so we can slide them in and out to move. And pretty much just to set the frame since we don't have any suspension components in there yet. So Jeremy's here, which means you know, this thing should probably be a roller 
and we should be able to get this thing fired up by the end of the night, right? Sure. Like we're going to crossbar tomorrow. Okay. A little test go. run. That's I mean, you promised. I don't have a tow rig right you, now. You promised a lot. That was the plan. That was the plan. That I thought that's why I let you come over here. That's why oh, that is yeah. Captain LJ is here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean you if you can plan a trip for somehow to allow LJs to go down a trail without breaking, you should be able to be able to do this. You should, right? I mean. Especially in the middle of Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> oh well cool. We're gonna uh keep working and uh get Jeremy dirty. So the next project we are working on is the Atlas shift cable. So figured we would do this while the body is still removable much easier up here than it would be snaking it underneath. So Jeremy's actually got some progress made. The shift, what they call this? Shift plate? Shift bay, base or something? Shift base. Yeah, we uh, bolt that in. That's the first step. I have never done this. He's never done it. So luckily we have instructions on my phone and we're just gonna follow instructions for the first time maybe we'll i don't know let's see what's the there's a lot of parts here it's a pretty basic kit it's their universal shifter kit we get the cables the base plate our shift handles the boot and then uh yeah stuff like that we got to figure out what that's for so i'll set the camera down and hopefully we can knock this out Cassie is up here to help out with the next project, but before we move on to that, I want to talk a little bit about the shift linkages. Jeremy Duper and I were able to get, I don't know why I said his last name Jeremy like that. Duper. I just, I will stick to Jeremy. Jeremy and I put this in. He was a major help. One thing I will say is I would never, ever want to do this install with the body on. It was hard enough figuring all of this out just with the bird's eye view, doing it from underneath would be a complete pain in the butt. And I think that's probably why people have issues shifting their Atlas is because it's almost impossible to set this 100% right when you're trying to snake up in here and get everything set. So here, you know, I know the video wasn't too much help for those of you installing the shifter, but I'm sure there's a video out there. This is what the final outcome should look like. You know, we want to have equal spacing on the threads. There's a little ferrule that sits in there. The instructions are pretty good, but you know, seeing it in person might help somebody, but that is done. We have to wait to do the in cab portion for the actual shifters once we're done raising and lowering the body. But moving on to the next project is going to be the water pump. Mm -hmm. So Cassie's going to help assemble this. This came in the other here. day. Yep, it's got the F body spacing to match the damper or the harmonic balancer, whatever you want to call it. We should be good to go. And we've actually done a few things to it. So first off, this is our heater core bypass. bypass. Typically this would go up to your heater core, but race Jeep stuff, we are not gonna be running a heater. Luckily the PRP seats are heated. So we bypassed the heater core and over here on the thermostat housing, went ahead and bolted on a dash 20 or an AN fitting because our water pump all the way back to the radiator is all gonna be AN fittings. That way we don't have to worry about leaks. We don't have to worry about anything getting loose. And that brings up our next point for this right here. So this is just set up for a hose barb. The previous LS water pump that we had actually had an AN fitting welded onto here. Now the issue with that is if we're in the middle of nowhere, not necessarily the race, but if we're in the middle of nowhere and our water pump goes bad, if we're set up for all AN fittings and we have to go to the store and buy a new water pump, the chances of finding, first off, somewhere to TIG weld an AN adapter on there and finding an AN adapter is very, very slim. So what we're gonna do is run an auto plumb setup on here, which actually just kind of cr uh, bolts onto this and converts it to AN. And if you need to swap over to a new water pump eventually, you just swap over that AN auto plumb fitting and unbolt the thermostat housing and boom, your new water pump is set up for AN fittings. So that is enough talking. We got some ARP bolts here, our Felpro gaskets, and later I'll show you how to measure for an auto plumb fitting. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get this on. Now that we're done with that grueling install, I know it was pretty hard. We're gonna show you guys 
Last thing in this video is how to measure for the auto plumb and fittings if you are curious. Yep, so we're gonna measure the water neck. We're gonna turn it on. Make sure it's zeroed out. I think it's almost out of batteries too. It's flashing on us. Maybe it'll last. So 1.33. 1.33. Now with some of these, you do have to take a measurement in a different spot. So let's take a vertical measurement just because these aren't always perfectly circle. Yeah, 1.31. So they do have a margin of error. I think it's 25 thou, but yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to check that on their website. But they have all kinds of listings. The main thing we wanna do is measure on the actual water neck, not on the barbed fittings. And you go to their website, find the one that fits your needs, and you are good to go. So earlier, I know when we started off this video, we were planning to get the goat belt brackets installed as well, but reading their instructions, turns out that you kinda of have to have the pump and the alternator to kinda of put it all together before it goes on the engine. So those are not ordered yet. We'll knock those out when they come in. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Like always, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys next week. Hopefully, I get surgery this Friday, and if you can't tell, Cassie got a little biopsy they done took my on a mole. Face mole. Yeah, wow. her classic mole. I have one. She had one. Both of our kids have one. Fingers crossed and they took mine. that it's nothing bad. I'm a little bit sad. So It'll next be good. Week, we'll probably do some stuff on my Jeep since he's going to be. I'll be down, so we're gonna wheel Cassie's Jeep in yeah, here, and I'm gonna so sit. I'm gonna sit around with the camera and film her doing some work. <laughs> See you guys later.